the average person is not going to develop an expertise in every area. You couldn't possibly. And so I'm often accused by people say, oh, well, you have faith too. You have faith in, in the scientists. And, and I continually point out that what I have is not faith. I have a particular definition of faith that it's the excuse people give for believing something without a good reason. And I have confidence and trust that is proportional to my reasons and the expertise of individuals. But if somebody said, Richard Dawkins is the world's foremost expert on biology and everything that he says is true and you become their expert, that is a massive influence that can be abused. And we see individuals going out and specifically getting degrees that they then ignore their teaching and serve as experts for the creationists. How can the average person know who they should rely on and how much? That is very difficult, and, and you're perfectly right that uh, what, certainly one of the leading um, so-called experts in the Discovery Institute, the so-called Discovery Institute in Seattle... Um, I'm waiting for their discovery. Yeah. Um, he actually... He's, he's, a, he's a Mooney, um, a, a follower of the Reverend Moon, and he actually said, Father, that, that's their word for the Reverend Moon, Father chose me to get a PhD in biology so that I could go out and preach against evolution. So you're entirely right there. But it's a serious question you raise because you're perfectly right. We cannot all become experts in everything. Um, I'm a biologist and I'm manifestly not an expert in physics. So is it just faith when I accept the Big Bang, quantum theory? Not really, as if for just the reason you give. Um, it's not blind faith, it's reasoned faith. We know that the scientific method, the scientific enterprise, has checks and safeguards. We have uh, refereeing papers, we have peer review, we have uh, repetition of experiments which are controversial. If, some, if somebody publishes a paper which, uh, pr which is um, uh, imp an important um, finding, it will get replicated, it will get repeated, and if it's not repeated, then something's wrong. So we, we have the scientific method in place, which is, has been honed and developed over centuries to guard against self-deception, to, to, to increase the, to, to, to make it highly likely that the truth will eventually come out. It's not really faith. Um, so we have a kind of trust in, not so much the experts, but in the, we don't say that he's a Nobel Prize winner, therefore he must be right. We never say that. Um, Although Bob Dylan is right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bob Dylan. And I, I think that's rather a nice idea for the Nobel Prize for Literature. But don't you think it's high time a scientist got the Nobel Prize for Literature? <laughs> It, it's not just in the realm of science where we are going to struggle with this difficulty over who to trust. We see it in news reports as well. Which news station do you happen to listen to? That's going to dictate what you think the facts are. And it's bad enough in, in for example, in the United States, I've had a bunch of arguments over the past week or so uh, about politics, imagine that. And one of my longtime friends had made the comment of, oh, well, um, Hillary's getting ready to be indicted to, you know, on two more uh, issues, and, but I bet you wouldn't accept this particular Fox News source as credible. And he was right to assume that, but as it turns out, that source recanted, and now, as the news today, the, they're not going to be in indictments. And I'm waiting to see if, if this person acknowledges, okay, I made a horrible claim based on faulty uh, information, and I'll retract it because I don't see that retraction often. Instead, it's, yes, but she's still guilty of this, this, and this. Yeah. And if we have that issue in politics, and we have this issue when it comes to religion, and we have this issue when it comes to science, is it just we're all too damn lazy to do our homework, or is it the, our day-to-day -day lives are not consumed with matters of biology or matters of fact-finding on a, on a political issue. And so it doesn't seem as important to us even when it should be that important. I think in the case of news sources, it, it, it is, there is the echo chamber effect has often been, been mentioned. People tend to tune into the 
television station that they agree with, and so they just get their, um, their views uh, reinforced. I do want to come back, though, to the point that science is a bit different, because science is, has been tailored to, to, to put in place mechanisms for avoiding that, that kind of thing. Um, just take one example, the, the double-blind control trial, which is now so important in medical research. With the best will in the world, a scientist is in danger of s subtle biases in experimental work. You, you don't mean to, you're, you're desperately trying not to be biased, but it's extremely hard not to. If you're doing a medical trial, you're testing some new drug against, against a control. If you desperately want the drug to succeed, then your diagnosis of the patients who've had it may be slightly biased in favor of the drug rather than the control. Mm -hmm. Or you may be so conscientious that you're even biased in favor of the control. Either way, you want to avoid that kind of bias. So the double-blind control trial technique, where neither the doctor nor the patient nor any nurse who's administering the drug or the, or the control knows which is which. This is secret, locked up in code numbers. It's locked up in a computer. It, the, the, which is the control and which is the experimental drug is not known to any of those people until the experiment is finished and only then is it unlocked from the, from the computer. So that totally guards against bias of this kind. Science is full, modern science at least, is in, in, quite recent. I mean not, 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 I mean, not that long ago, that kind of safeguard was not in place. Now it is. So science is hedged about with safeguards against that kind of thing. And it's, you know, I've been accused of scientism, and, and perhaps I'm even guilty. I think probably the biggest frustration is that most individuals are going to get their information about science from news sources, and we live in a world where every sensationalized headline is the one that's going to get the attention. So it seems like every other day, science, which I'll put in air quotes, has found God or found this, and, and people don't often go beyond the headline even, let alone to find out what the sources are.